diluted uh, earnings per share. Now, in this case, when talk about uh, diluted earnings per share, we say that this is the earning per share which is computed by the company, taking into account the effect of uh, the potential ordinary shares on both the earnings or the profit which is attributable to ordinary shareholders and also <coughs> uh, to the weighted average number of uh, shares. So mean that uh, this is an um, earning per share uh, which is computed or we say uh, it is uh, computed, uh, computed, uh, taking into account or taking, uh, taking into account, into account, uh, account the effect, taking into account uh, the effect uh, of uh, potential ordinary shares, potential uh, ordinary shares, uh, ordinary uh, shares. Uh, both on the profit uh, or both to the profit, both uh, to the profit, uh, to the profit, uh, and one loss, and uh, one loss. Now, in this case here, we have uh, um, the, the, the term, we have the term potential ordinary shares. Now, when we talk about uh, potential ordinary shares here, we say that this refers now to any contract or basically any financial instrument issued by the company, uh, which then requires the company to issue uh, ordinary shares uh, in what uh, in future. Meaning that uh, <coughs> when talk about now uh, the potential ordinary shares, uh, potential uh, ordinary shares, uh, ordinary shares, we have said that this um, is a financial instrument. This uh, is a, a financial instrument. A financial uh, instrument, uh, instrument stroke contract, uh, stroke contract, uh, contract, uh, which or bridge, uh, which uh, or bridge, or which request that is, which uh, request the company, request the company, the company uh, to issue, uh, to issue uh, ordinary shares in future. To issue ordinary uh, shares uh, in what uh, in future, and therefore, when um, good examples of uh, this particular uh, potential ordinary shares, or basically examples will include uh, examples include examples will include uh, one. We do have uh, what we find is the convertible securities convertible uh, securities or uh, what in other terms we refer to as a convertible financial instrument and two we do have uh, what if far as a uh, uh, employees 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 uh, stock option uh, stock options uh, stroke warrant stroke uh, warrant so these are basically good examples of uh, uh, what if far as potential ordinary shares now first of all when talk about uh, what if far as convertible securities this include uh, those particular financial instruments uh, which uh, will actually confer or basically give their holders the right to convert them uh, into ordinary shares and therefore good examples of convertible securities include convertible debentures convertible uh, pre franchise a convertible boats, convertible on stock and so on, simply because the holder of those particular financial instrument or those particular securities do have the right to convert them into ordinary wood uh, shares. Now, the other good example of uh, potential ordinary shares is a uh, employee stock option or basically stock wood warrant. I think we mentioned something to do with that in our previous class when we were looking at the computation of uh, basic uh, earnings per share and we say that employee stock option or warrant are basically the rights uh, given to the employees of the company to buy shares of the company in future at a price which is below the market uh, price now what you need to note is that employee stock option or basically warrant will only be considered now to be a stock option if the employees have not exercised their option is at the end of the of the year. So therefore, uh, what you have said is that when computing now the diluted earning per share, uh, what we do is that we take into account uh, the effect of those particular potential ordinary shares on both the profit and it is now the profit which is attributable to ordinary shareholders and also uh, what you find is a uh, one loss. Uh, for instance, um, if at all maybe uh, we are told that uh, 
a, a company. Uh, maybe you can just uh, have a small illustration to understand how we compute this. If we are told that uh, a company uh, had issued uh, maybe like 8% uh, uh, convertible, 8% convertible debentures, uh, debentures, debentures, uh, having a value of uh, maybe uh, shillings, uh, 10 million, 10 million. Now, what you need to note is that in each and every financial year, this company which has issued this particular uh, convertible uh, uh, debentures, the company will be required now to pay interest, will be required to pay uh, interest to the holder of those particular what? Uh, debentures. So what you need to note is that that particular interest which is paid by the company, by the end of the day, this is an expense. This is an uh, expense in the income statement. So mean that by the end of the day, when computing this uh, profit uh, or the earnings which will be attributable to ordinary shareholders, that interest will have been deducted too. Um, as a result of the company having issued those particular convertible uh, debentures, the holders of those uh, debentures will be having the right to uh, convert them into ordinary shares. Meaning that uh, the moment now the holder of these particular uh, debentures decide now to exercise their right and they convert them uh, into ordinary shares of the company, into ordinary uh, shares of, of the company, that will be having two effect. One, uh, that conversion of uh, the convertible debentures into ordinary uh, shares, one, it will be uh, affecting the profit of the company because once now the um, those particular debentures are converted into ordinary shares, the company will stop paying that word interest. And therefore, the amount of profit here or the amount of earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders will have now to increase simply because the company will no longer pay that uh, interest. Two, um, the number of ordinary shares issued by the company, number of uh, ordinary shares, uh, shares uh, issued by the company still will increase. Meaning that uh, if the number of ordinary shares issued by the company will increase, then there will be an increase in what? One loss. And that's why we have said when computing now the diluted earning per share, we take uh, into account the effect of uh, uh, those particular potential ordinary shares, both on the earnings or the profit and also on the number of ordinary shares. And therefore, for the purpose of computing this diluted earning per share, there is an assumption which we make. For instance, if we are told that in a given financial year, the company had uh, issued 8% convertible debentures, uh, we compute now the amount by which the profit uh, would have increased by during the current financial year if those particular debentures were converted into ordinary shares in course of the of the assuming that we compute something known as increase in earnings uh, two we also compute something known as increase in number of uh, shares but for us now to be able to do that then we there is an assumption which we make the assumption is that if the company has issued convertible debentures then those debentures were converted into ordinary uh, shares in course of their meaning that this profit will with a certain amount and then the number of uh, odd, uh, weighted average number of ordinary shares would have increased with a certain uh, amount and therefore when computing the diluted earning per share the diluted earning per share this is the formula which we use we use now the earnings the earnings uh, used in the computation of uh, basic earning per share used in the computation of basic earning per share we have to remember that the earnings or the profit used in the computation of basic earning per share is given by the profit after tax less the preferred word a uh, dividend and then to this we add a uh, something known as increase a uh, increase in uh, earnings increase in earnings so basically you have said that increase in earnings refers now to the amount by which the profit of the current financial year would have increased by if for example de uh, these convertible debentures were converted into ordinary what? shares because we have said if that is the case debentures were converted into ordinary shares the company would not have paid that what? interest meaning that our profit then would have increased with a certain amount and then we divide that with the weighted average number of shares as still used in the computation of basic earning per share and then to this we add we add increase in number of shares increase in number of uh, shares increase in number of uh, 
uh, shares. Now, in this case, when we talk about increase in number of shares there, we are talking of the number of ordinary shares, which, for instance, would have uh, been issued by the company in cost here on the assumption that uh, these convertible debentures were converted into ordinary shares in course of the of there. So therefore, generally, that's now how we compute now uh, the basic earning per share. Before we look on uh, a, a specific illustration in terms of uh, uh, to, uh, the computation of basic earning per share, uh, I want us to look on how we treat uh, the convertible securities and the employees uh, stock option for the purpose of computing our diluted uh, earning per share. And let's start with the, with the convertible uh, securities. Uh, convertible uh, securities. Uh, convertible uh, securities. Now, uh, first of all, uh, we have said convertible securities are the financial instruments uh, which uh, confer the holders the right to be able to convert them into ordinary wood uh, shares. And basically, you've seen that good examples of this, uh, examples of, uh, of this uh, include, uh, include uh, convertible uh, debentures, convertible debentures, convertible uh, boats, convertible run stock, uh, run stock, and convertible uh, preference shares. Remember preference shares we said in other terms, this can also be referred to as uh, preferred shares. So therefore, these are good examples of convertible securities. They confer their holders the right to be able to convert them into ordinary shares. Now, if at all you are told that um, or if you are given a question and we are required to compute the diluted earning per share, the first thing we are supposed to do is to identify the potential ordinary share. And maybe let us assume in our case, we are given a case whereby a company had issued, maybe um, uh, the company had issued a uh, convertible securities, e.g. convertible debentures, convertible own stock, and so on. So for the purpose of computing the diluted earning per share, then you have seen that we make an assumption that those particular uh, debentures, that is convertible debentures, convertible boats, convertible own stock, were converted into ordinary shares in course of the of there. So as a result of that then, we have seen that uh, uh, the earnings which is attributable to ordinary shareholders as used in the computation of basic EPS would have increased with a certain amount and also the number of shares would have increased with a certain what, uh, amount. Now having made that particular assumption, we are supposed then to compute. We are supposed to compute two items. Uh, one, uh, we should compute something known as uh, increase in earnings. Uh, increase in earnings uh, in earnings uh, what now we have there <coughs> in our formula now this particular increase in earnings um, is computed as in case the company has issued convertible securities whereby the company is supposed to pay interest g debentures both or loan stock the increase in earnings is always equal to the amount of interest which was paid by the company during that year but this interest should be taken net of should be taken net of tax. What we have to remember in taxation is that uh, interest on debentures, interest on uh, uh, both interest on uh, run stock, that interest is allowable expense. So therefore, it is always deducted before uh, tax. So that's why uh, the amount by which earnings would have, or the amount of, by which the profit would have increased by, should be equal to that interest. But uh, it should be net of tax. It should be net of tax simply because that is tax uh, allowable. But on the other hand, if at all maybe the company has issued or had issued convertible uh, uh, preference or preferred shares, the amount of increase in earnings is always equal to the preference dividend, uh, preference dividend for the year, uh, for the year, preference dividend for the uh, for the year. So therefore, that is the first thing we are supposed to compute, that is increase in earnings. But we have said for us to compute that, we have to make an assumption that these convertible securities were converted into ordinary shares in course of the year. Because if they were converted into ordinary shares in course of the year, the company would not have paid interest, meaning that our profit would have increased with that amount of uh, interest, net of tax. If the company had issued convertible securities, the amount of earnings or the amount of profit would have increased with the amount of preference dividends uh, paid. After computing that, two, we proceed and we compute uh, what is known as increase in uh, number of shares.
increase in number of uh, shares. Now, in this case, when we talk about increase in number of shares, we are talking of the number of ordinary shares which would have been issued if at all those particular convertible uh, both or maybe convertible securities were converted uh, into ordinary shares in course of the of the definitely for us to compute that we will compute that using uh, a certain rate we shall be given eh? so therefore you'll be told that uh, for each may be convertible debentures or uh, uh, both having a certain value are convertible into to certain number of ordinary shares now having that then we need to proceed and we compute now the increase in earnings now having computed these two uh, values there increase in earnings increase in number of shares then we need to apply that formula and then we compute the diluted earning per a uh, per share so that generally how uh, we deal uh, with the uh, what if far as uh, the convertible securities then on the other hand we have said that the potential ordinary shares will include a uh, what if far as employees uh, options that is a uh, uh, stock options a uh, stock uh, options and warrants and warrants of which we have said that this uh, stock options and warrant are basically now the right given to the employees of the company to buy the shares of the company in future at a price which is below the market price now um first of all we say that uh, for the purpose of computing the basic earning per share if you can be able to remember the basic earning per share we say that we use stock options and warrants whenever the employees have exercised their right in course of the year so that is when uh, we use the stock option and warrant and basically we say that whenever now the employees exercise their option they buy the shares of the company at a price below the market uh, price and therefore those shares uh, which are issued to the employees um, once they exercise their stock option and uh, for the purpose of computing uh, the basic earning per share we say that we split them into two components into shares deemed to be issued at full a market price and what we refer as the bonus would element or basically those shares uh, which are deemed to be issued for for free but on the other hand uh, for the purpose of computing now uh, our diluted earning per share stock options and warrant will only be considered to be potential ordinary shares uh, if the employees have not exercised their right as at the end of the year because if the employees have not exercised their right as at the end of the year then they will be buying the shares of the company in, in future so therefore that is very very important that uh, uh, stock options uh, options uh, are considered uh, are considered uh, considered as a uh, potential ordinary shares a potential ordinary uh, shares uh, shares if if they are not exercised if they are not that is important if they are not exercised uh, exercised at the end of the year at the end of the year end of the uh, year so mean that if now the employees have not exercised the year a stock option at the end of the year definitely will be having a right to buy the shares of the company in future at a price which is below the market a price now if that is the case then still we need to compute these two items we need to compute a uh, one a uh, increase in earnings increase in earnings uh, in earnings and uh, what we have said is that uh, stock option stock warrant are basically the right given to the employees of the company to buy shares of the company in what in future and therefore what you need to note is that unlike these uh, convertible securities uh, which are still potential ordinary shares these rights given to the employees of the company do not have any effect on the profit for the year on the profit for the year because you have said uh, something like debentures they have effect or they reduces the profit uh, of the year simply because the company paid interest but once the company has granted the employees the right to buy shares in future that right do not have any effect on the earnings or the profit for the current world yeah and therefore in case of stock option we say that the increase in earnings is always equal to zero that should be the case too we also compute a uh, increase uh, in number of shares increase in number of shares now to compute this increase in number of shares just like uh, what you have said in case of convertible securities we then make an assumption that the employees exercised 
their stock option in course of the year. If they exercise their stock option in course of the year, then those shares which would have been issued by the company uh, would have been split into two. Shares which were issued at full market price and shares which were issued for free. Or the bonus would, uh, the bonus element. And therefore, in this case here, uh, when computing now this increase in a uh, number of shares, those shares which would have been issued by the company, assuming the employees exercise their option in course of the year, would be would have been split into two. Those shares uh, which were issued at full market price, which were issued at full market price, and those shares uh, which were issued for free, or basically what if far as the bonus element the bonus element now these shares which would have been issued uh, at full market price these shares uh, will not be having any dilution at all or will not dilute the basic earning per share simply because these are shares issued by the company and the company receive additional resources or receive additional amount of, of money so therefore these particular shares here do not have dilution do not have dilution do not have a uh, dilution or basically they do not reduce earning per share and therefore for the purpose of computing the basic uh, uh, sorry the diluted earning per share those shares are never considered are never considered but on the other hand we do have the bonus element and basically these are shares then which are deemed to be issued for free so these are the, the shares which will be issued by the company uh, or the company here will issue additional shares to receiving additional resources just like a case whereby uh, from our profit here sorry from uh, our here computing basic earning per share if you increase the number of shares issued by the company that is never affected or you don't uh, affect the profit then the basic earning per share which you compute by the end of the day there should be less because you have increased your denominator your, uh, your numerator remains the same so therefore uh, we have said in case of uh, the bonus uh, element here, these are additional shares issued by the company, but without the company receiving additional good, additional uh, resources. <laughs>